so developer backyard and this is based on the feedback from the beta and what happened during the beta and what this, the Guilty Gear devs are going to do going forward. And I, I read the first few parts of this and I was like, yo, holy, holy sh**. Uh, so, number one, which character did you use the most? By the way, receiving 51,000 responses to a survey for a anime fighting game not based on an existing long running legacy show slash manga property. This is a huge number, right? Number one, 51K responses, 51,000 people filled out the survey. And there is no way even half, even I, I'd say possibly a quarter of the people that actually played the Guilty Gear Strive beta filled out the survey completely. So that is a big number. Uh, I think there was way more people playing Guilty Gear Strive than they were anticipating, which is a which is a very cool thing to, for Guilty Gear to be the most popular it technically has ever been. Yeah, Ramlethal dominated the beta, right? Which character do you like the most? Holy crap, you thirsty feet loving <laughs> boys! Look, Ram, 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 and uh, South America was third. Wow. I mean, granted, which character was used the most during the beta? I'm not surprised Ram was the most used character during the beta because she had practically unbreakable combos from near mid screen that pushed you into the corner. If you did burst it, you just got punished again. And getting her damage was not difficult. So I'm really not surprised because later on when you get to when you got to heaven, when you got to the higher ranks of Guilty Gear Strive's beta, there was a shit ton a shit ton of RAM players. Poor Nago? Dude, what do you mean, poor Nago? Leo's not even on here. Everyone found out that Leo wasn't as unga bunga crazy as he was before, and nobody's even playing him anymore. I might've been the only Leo player, me and one other person. Foss, I mean, Foss is a weirdo. He's always been a weird character. But yeah, like they're not even on there, man. Holy shit, Chip's not even on there. Milia's not even on there. But it's really funny how everyone had a pocket Nago, right? I think that's actually kind of dope. I kind of want to see what Nago changes like in the final version of the game because I was investing so much time into Giovanna, into Saul, and and especially Leo. Yeah, Potemkin's not even up here at all. Like, and Potemkin was a was a dominating factor in the beta. Anyway, uh, which character do you like the most? So Ram and Geo dominating the hell out of most of this. Milia sneaks her way in in South America, but uh, very interesting. Very interesting comparisons uh, put here between who who do you like the most and which character was played the most. Moving on, here's an interesting thing. Please rate the following modes. Network mode, quick match, and online lobby got a huge, the, the biggest negative reaction, more than 50% was either bad or very bad, or probably I'd say 70, maybe even 75% was saying it was average. So the, op the lobbies got Fucked. The lobbies, people were pissed uh, for good reason. They say her versus mode has a high rating due to the fact that you might not be able to play versus mode very much. Uh, tutorial receiving mixed reactions. People praising it for its unique freedom it gives the player as opposed to a traditional textbook style explanation. However, pointed out it lacks the explanations needed for an introduction to the game. Our intent for the tutorial mode is to show the player that they can enjoy fighting games without having to study. We intentionally left out explanations of the game's mechanics and the different uses for each attack button. I have never read a more co contradictory statement coming right after the previous sentence. This has to be a translation error. Let's read it very slowly again. Our intent for the training mode, we wanna show people that you can enjoy fighting games without having to study. You don't need to study. So we left out specific gameplay mechanic explanations and the uses for those moves. What? So now I have to go study. Now I gotta go, I, ha I have to go look up a video to see what they do. I mean, granted, this isn't for this isn't for anyone that's like ever played Guilty Gear before, right? This really isn't their... What they're trying to do is not freak people out with Guilty Gear mechanics. But I think that's literally the opposite of what... This is the... It, once again, this is boiling down the problem of fighting game tutorials. Devs refuse to, to take the challenge that tutorial modes kind of suck in all fighting games, and you need to teach people a different way. People need to be taught the mechanics of a fighting game 
the same way that you are taught the unique and different mechanics in a God of War game, right? By the end of God of War, and you're fighting Valkyries and shit, which a lot of people do, you can still play the game with, with limited mechanics and get really far. But if you take advantage of all these things the game gives you, it's a lot easier. So my issue with this is that the general situation of a tutorial mode in fighting games sucks. Here is you and here is, uh, here is brain dead AI. They're gonna sit there and do nothing. You're gonna press the buttons we tell you to press and you're gonna see the cool shit you can do. Now, good luck go doing it against somebody. And that sucks. That's like, okay, cool. I now know the thing, but I have no idea how to utilize or implement it. In previous games, players new to the fighting genre would need to put in some practice in order to complete the tutorial. We checked the result data and replays from the first floor of Rank Tower and saw that many matches with neither players are using special moves or every game mechanic. We will brush up on the finer aspects of this mode, but for the most part, we felt this style tutorial was successful. What? Okay, so that's contradictory sentence number two. Also, in the finished game, the mission mode will include missions for practicing game mechanics such as wall break and Roman cancels. Combos for each character, as well as a variety of techniques. Players who want to delve deeper into the various mechanics or level up their game can look forward to that. I played the tutorial in this so briefly that I don't even remember it. That's just once again, the same tutorial stuff. That's like the same thing where it's like, here, do this. And you did it. Congratulations, you did it. Now go do it to people online. <laughs> you know? uh, how about the arcade mode in some ways includes elements that teaches the player that, hey, you know what? Uh, Potemkin's jumping at you constantly. Potemkin is always doing this move and you can't stop him. How do you stop this move? Well, check this out. You're gonna play it to Potemkin that's gonna jump every once in a while. So do forward punch or, you know, do uppercut. You need, to, you need to blend it into the single player elements. A lot of the cool information that was available in the later versions of Guilty Gear that essentially taught you how to play against characters and what you should be using with your character was already there because previous versions of the game had been out for years. There were some great tutorials in the later Guilty Gear Xard series that sort of taught the player, yo, you're gonna get messed up by Chip doing this to you. Here's how you defend against this stuff. But it came with a caveat, the game needed to exist for some time for those play styles and those defensive capabilities to sort of be taught to the player. So will that be there at the very start of this Guilty Gear? I don't know. I'd be pretty impressed if it was because shit changes rapidly with the vanilla fighting game, you know? The online lobby is an area from the test we need to work most on and determine needs to be improved before released. Even side, aside from the server issues, it was difficult to use and hard to understand. Although we continually worked on internal improvements following last year's closed beta, we realized that we let everyone down. Here are some plans to fix the issues. A system where players select a visible area where they want to have a match. And after winning a match, the player stays where they are in a battle ready state, unless their rating changes. So what they are confirming with the first two sentences the lobby is staying the same, but we're just gonna fix it. I was warning everybody, there was no way that they were going to revamp this entire lobby system. There's no time for that. What they can do is make the existing lobby actually function, and that's what they're doing. They're adding a rematch option and expanding the area in each lobby with an option to hide the news display and adding a dash movement for avatars. The fact that it's getting a rematch option is funny considering that that might not have been there before. It's a good thing everyone complained about that because holy shit, it might not have actually happened. This will make the lobbies more like those in our other games. <laughs> However, the system such as moving floors when your rating changes and the option to enter training mode while waiting for a match will remain. That's good. That's probably the best part of the lobby. We want to conduct the another beta test once these fixes are ready. Neat! There'll probably be a beta sometime in, in May, I'd imagine. Although the training mode was praised for a number of options available, players also noted that menu was difficult to understand. We're looking at ways to improve the visibility for the menus of all modes. Cool. System and camera movement had some of the lowest ratings on here, while character visuals and animations through the roof. We asked for opinions on aspects of the game, uh, with you able to freely write your thoughts. The visuals and effects, we got many comments stating the game looks good, but there's issues with, issues with visibility. In particular, many players encountered issues with characters blending into the background and being difficult to see. I'm assuming this is the issue on the the stage where you're in like the river you're fighting in the river on the the very shaded foresty area the snow map is also probably a big issue too with the zato skin 
Yeah, stuff like that. I think the forest and the snow map were the most visible issues that I remember. Players encounter issues where they're blending in the background, you lose track of positions due to camera effects. With Strive, we're trying our hand at using effects and visuals that are thought of as taboo when developing fighting games. Good. That's good. I I've always felt Guilty Gear tries to push the, uh, the boundary there. The current state of the game is the baseline for our general direction, but we're still working on refining and improving it. That makes sense. As far as issues with characters' visibility, we are looking into adding a setting so that each player can adjust it for their needs. Wow! Exactly what you should do! You nailed it. Bam. Killed it in one option. I just want an option to make the effects not be big and crazy. I want an option to possibly turn off the motion blur, right? Things like that. I want an option to possibly give the characters like maybe red or blue silhouettes or something like that if you really wanted that. Having that be an option is completely fine. As for the music, we received requests that people want to learn, uh, listen to previous songs from Guilty Gear, but in the retail version, we'll be able to purchase them with in-game currency. Nice! Um, so we can have the smell of the game and heavy day. Nice. This covers so many topics that may have been difficult to answer on the survey. Answers the topic that had the most variation depending on what players, uh, what games players have experience with in their region. Let's take a look at some of the most frequently mentioned key phrases in everyone's answers. The damage is too high, too damn high. Players commented that the damage is way too high. Many concerned that this is not just a problem with the game's balance, but also takes away the fun of pulling off damaging combos. Huh. Yeah, I don't think the damage is specifically an issue, but it definitely de-incentivizes the fact that, uh, if you go for more difficult things, sometimes the easier thing to do is more damaging. At least that was the case with Saul. After hearing feedback, we plan to adjust the damage so that it is more suitable for how often and how difficult it is to land each attack. In general, however, the damage is gonna remain high as it's part of Guilty Gear Strive's design. I like it. Okay, I like it. Adjusting the damage, which makes it more suitable for how often and how difficult it is to land each attack. So, Scaling on certain attacks, depending on how their, their ease of use. That's literally identical to the Gatling system that was before. Gatling scaled if you started the combo with lower power buttons, right? So if you had a big long combo that started with a fast, quick button, then you didn't get as much damage, which is the overall balance of a combo system that allows for like chain scaling. If you chain from lower attacks to heavy attacks, Lower attack is gonna is gonna lead the combo to do less damage, but if you start with a heavy attack, it's gonna hurt a lot. And why does that make sense? Because the heavy attack is harder to land. And I'm assuming it's really gonna boil down to this. If you RC after a big damaging hit at the start, like a dolphin or a pot buster or something like that, right? I think the, the follow-up RC attack that you get is probably gonna be scaled a lot more. This is probably gonna be a case-by-case -case situation, but that's my guess. Uh, it could be said that part of Guilty Gear's appeal is the tension and exhilaration felt during fast-paced matches. In previous titles, however, the player could only experience this after practicing and learning complicated combos. The length of the average combo is much shorter in Strife so that more players than before can experience this. Aggressively disagree. I see where you're coming from, and I aggressively disagree. This is why the overall damage is set high, including for single hits. There are also other elements influenced by this direction, such as our reconsideration of the frequency of combos in general. Okay, we've analyzed many replays from the beta test and we feel the game mechanics are overall successful. We are adjusting the game so that simple combos and situational combos have their own merits. Not limited to damage, but also in terms of meter efficiency and the situation you're in after the combo. Okay. Roman can't, oh, he, this, okay, so this was my, this was the thing that I actually wrote into the dialogue box. The box where I was like, hey, tell us what you, what your big complaint is as a tester. And my big complaint was that meter and RC doesn't happen frequently enough. You just don't get to use RC stuff as frequently as possible because the matches end too quick because the damage is very high. This one I am super super curious about. Fans of the previous GG games in particular had positive things to say about Roman cancels. Uh, as most people do, the RC system is sick in this. At the same time, many mentioned feeling restricted because the round would finish before they could use Roman cancels how they'd like. Yeah? Taking this into consideration, we have, we have reconsidered the general rules surrounding meter gain. We didn't simply just increase the gain rate, but you should be able to use your meter more freely overall. I know what they did. I know, I know exactly what they did. And you're gaining meter? That's what they did. 
Now, I, I think, I don't know how they're going to adjust this. This is, this is curious. Realistically, outside of a Dragon Ball charge, the only thing that makes me think that they could have done there is they, instead of splitting meter into 50%, uh, just two bars, maybe they split meter into, uh, quarters, right? Maybe they do quarter meter, sort of similar to how Guilty Gear XR did. Four parts, maybe three parts? Three parts would make sense. Thirds makes a lot of sense. That would probably fix most of the problems. I think fourths is probably too much. Jumping is too strong! <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, many players felt that the neutral game was lacking due to grounded anti-airs just being too weak. Well, aerial options were too strong, uh, making jumping a common choice. Uh, we determined that this needed improvement and have made significant changes. I can't explain each individual change here, but this is one point that will be very noticeable difference from the open beta test. Oh shit. You know what I think they're gonna do? I think they're gonna make anti-airs. Here's, here's how I would fix it. You make anti-airs actually air unblockable because now you can just properly block in the air, right? Even without even without doing, uh, even without using meter. I think the best way to approach this is by making moves actual air unblockable. Remove the jump button. I like it. Yeah, let's do it. Get rid of the infinites. Uh, before I read this, some infinites in this game existed. However, some led to really interesting combo paths. Conveniently also were infinites, but actually opened up some characters usability, specifically Saul and Geo. They got some really cool stuff. They don't need to be infinites, but they need to, there needs to be a consolidation because those things shouldn't be removed. They were actually really fun. There were a notable of instances of oversimplify simple combo structures. What we're planning to deal with this by adjusting the game mechanics in addition to the character balance so that these combos don't end up the most viable option. For example, hitting an opponent with the same move more then a set number of times would make them float less. This set number would be different depending on the move. We don't want to completely get rid of all the loop combos. So we chose to increase the ways we can balance the game. Okay, so they're not really telling us exactly what they're doing, but the most important aspect of this is we do not want to completely get rid of loop combos. Those things are fun. I have a double fucking thumbs up. I have a super, I have one thumb that is up and I have another thumb that is up and the other thumb went down and the other thumb came back up. Good. The online battle. The note code, the net code was highly praised. We saw many matches between different countries and regions. However, in some instances, matches could become quite unstable sometimes becoming incredibly slowed down. We'll be working on adjustments and improvements of the game's release as the game's release approaches. To get a bit deeper on this topic, during the test, we had the input delay fixed at one frame. Wow. That was it. For anyone that knows how rollback netcode works, if the entire beta was at an unchanged one frame, this game has the best netcode of any fighting game I've played. Even better than Killer Instinct, like even better than a lot of the other rollback fighting games that have existed. And I was assuming that they were on two to three. That's uh, actually, that makes this even more impressive if what they're saying is true. Due to the experience with previous Guilty Gear games, some players confused the rollback frames displayed for the input delay. However, the input delay was locked at one frame. Yeah, I had to explain this to you guys over and over and over and over again. Um, and they're just confirming it. No, it was locked at one frame. Okay, so in the previous backyard, we we're looking into whether or not we should allow the player to set their input delay based on network connection and how to handle filtering network connection strength. We are hoping to conduct another beta test after fixing the bugs and improving the game system. So we are planning to make these decisions after looking at the results from that test. Well, I think the best answer for this uh, exists. You need the option. The whole thing of rollback netcode is that in most situations, you, you let the player choose how much your input delay will be to make your experience as smooth as possible. I think letting the users choose that is confusing, but I think the option is the best answer. But I think there being a standard is good. Like our game is going to use this. Auto would essentially change it from like zero to like five, because once you get beyond five, you start to definitely notice the input delay. Uh, zero is sketchy. Number one, actually, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Zero should never be used. Street Fighter V's was zero, which is what led to Street Fighter V having so many issues. The previous packet, we're looking into whether or not we should allow players to set their input delay strength. We're gonna have another beta test. This seems great, right? Timing is yet to be determined. This was incredible. Holy shit, man. I'd say a lot of the things that they talk about in here, outside of the, tu the tutorial stuff where we're like, we're purposely leaving things out to not confuse the players in our tutorial mode. I think that's genuinely confusing. However, so much of what they talk about in this, I cannot believe that it's 2021 
an Arc System Works fighting game is coming out, and it is actually on the cutting edge of online gameplay and infrastructure, and also is on the cutting edge of developer to player transparency. Thank you, that's the word I'm looking for, transparency. Their transparency regarding the development of the game is super upfront. And that is, even two years ago, I would never have thought, what, what, huh? To me, it seems like they genuinely give a shit. They're like, we know that a lot of people like the old gameplay styles. We're trying to appeal to our, towards a larger audience because now more people are playing Guilty Gear than ever before. And I think that's good. I still genuinely think what is what has put Guilty Gear on the map was Dragon Ball Fighters. Dragon Ball Fighters turned Arc System Works into a triple A sort of like extremely respected fighting game studio. It put them on the map. And more people are paying attention now than they ever have. It's really cool. It is honestly fucking great to see these guys finally getting their comeuppance. I think that's amazing because they've always deserved it. I, I think the direction that's happening with uh, Guilty Gear and the direction that's happening with Street Fighter now is fantastic. They're open and they're talking about the things that they want to put into their characters and they're open and transparent with a brand new game and willing to take player feedback to make adjustments going forward.